Hello, I'm probably riding my bike. I've been home for almost two weeks and I miss riding my bike every day. I had a couple of rides in my brother's Brompton in my hometown and an awesome ride in the new forest with the wood cycling and rune bikes. But I'm gonna ride a few different bikes in London. Just a short train ride and I'm always happy to be back here. I used to love visiting on day trips as a kid and I was lucky to live here for a few years as an adult too. Right, time to find a bike. Not my usual Rivendell, but it will do. An electric line bike. There's a few different bike rental options in London. You can get these electric line bikes, which you barely need to pedal on. I think there's some green forest, a few other electric ones. There's the city bikes, which are Santander bank bikes effectively named after the worst Prime Minister in our country's history, Boris Bikes. And there's also some Brompton Lockers as well. I'm going to try one of those later. I think that's probably the best, my favourite option. Cycling from Marylebone Station down through Westminster to get an English fry up, an English breakfast. I've been back for almost two weeks and I haven't had one yet. I'm going to go to one of my favourite places to get that. First I just need to pass Buckingham Palace through the hordes of tourists. I can't believe in 2024 we still have a royal family. But surprisingly, right. a lot of English people still love them. I'm not sure why. Always useful to have a bell on your bike. Anyway, it's pretty cool riding through central London, get to see things like police and the army on horses. Lots of pomp and ceremony. And I'm lucky with the beautiful weather today. Much nicer than the rest of my trip, especially the ride through the new forest. I never thought I'd miss the heat and humidity of Korean summer, but it's actually been kind of cold and gray most of July while I've been home. We've arrived at one of my favourite places for a fry up, Regency Cafe in Westminster. There's so many good places to get an English breakfast, but this is one of my favourites. It's full of tourists, but there are a lot of local people go to, and a lot of workers. It's just a shame they're Tottenham fans, but I can see past that. Good ratio of beans. I got the set breakfast with beans, tea, toast, and black pudding. I said it over in my head a thousand times before I ordered. I didn't want to mess up. No idea why I get anxious about that kind of thing. I didn't manage to get much more footage because it was super busy. And I shared a table with a guy from Norway who flew to England. I think he got a cheap ticket to England, bought a hundred pound bike, and he's going to cycle back to Norway via Belgium and the Netherlands. I hope he had a nice trip. When I lived in London, I rarely came to this area, but it's good fun to cycle through. The infrastructure's improved a little bit, but there's still parts where you just have to cross across the cars to get to the next part of the bike lane. And here's Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. Looking pretty sweet on this glorious day. I think I've had enough of this electric bike though. Let's go and pick up that Brompton I was talking about.
is one of the Brompton lockers. Most people who I talked about, even people who are into bikes, didn't know these even existed. There's a few spread around London and it's super cheap. You book it on your phone, it's five pounds a day or five pounds for 24 hours. You can take it out for multiple days too. People were surprised how cheap it was, uh, me too. I think it's more of a cheap marketing tool for them and it's working because it's on videos like mine. There's a little more work to ride than the electric bike I was on before, but definitely more fun. My wife has a Brompton back in Korea and I never ride it because I've got some really nice bikes with bigger wheels. So why would I choose one with tiny wheels? So actually I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy riding this bike in London, but actually it was good fun. London's fairly flat, so it got me around quite nicely. It's been a couple of hours since my morning coffee, so I better stop off for another one. And there's a pretty sweet one not far from here, owned by a coffee legend, James Hoffman's Cafe. Super busy lunchtime area. It's proof rock coffee. I've been quite a few times before, usually earlier in the morning when it's much quieter. Today was the office lunch rush. I still got to enjoy a single origin Ethiopian double espresso, but I was gone pretty quickly because it was too hectic for me. Cycle infrastructure in London has slowly been improving. I think there was a big improvement over COVID with more bike lanes and traffic lights specific for bikes. You can still see it's quite intense with not much space between the buses and the pavement. The quality of the infrastructure varies quite a lot between the different boroughs. I think Chelsea, Kensington may be the worst and I think Hackney is quite good. Before I head that way it's time to stop off for a probably riding cap delivery. I've got a new friend working at Tokyo Bike in London, which has the Tokyo Bikes, which are nice city commuters and lots of accessories from Blue Lug and cute things from Japan, including Kesuke. Kesuke is friends with my friend Yuta from Wood Village Cycles in Tokyo. He was even wearing the Wood Village t-shirt today. Nice to meet you, Kesuke. Hope you have a good time living in London. Maybe I don't know the good spots, but London doesn't have as good a bike shops as Tokyo does, but there's still some nice ones around. I'm going to head to another bike shop just around the corner in Shoreditch called Temple Cycles, I think originating from Bristol, but they have a shop here in London too. Just nice looking steel bikes for commuting. They have some road bikes and some gravel bikes as well. I had a quick go on this commuter which is just an effective, simple commuting bike, comfortable enough. And I even stopped off around the corner for something I couldn't resist. Basically, every time I go past, I have to get one of these cardamom buns from Pavilion Bakery. Glorious. Just a quick ride around Columbia Road, which is a flower market on the weekend. I used to stop there, quite a contrast to the bus terminal where I go to in Seoul now. And returning the temple back, getting my Brompton back and doing what a Brompton does, folding it up and taking it on the train. I'm going down to Peckham and South London. When you live in North London, South London feels like another world, another dimension. But actually it's only 25 minutes on the train. There's a bike shop down in Peckham that I've wanted to go to for a while. And I thought, why not take my chance now? Peckham's not an area I know very well, but I think it would be quite a cool place to live. Very diverse neighborhood. It was cool to take my Brompton on the train down here. I think on the overground, you can take full bikes during the day, just not during rush hour. But I don't want to take up all that space. I thought in bikes better for that. Just a few minutes from the station, I'm at Seabass Cycles which is an incredible bike shop. Nikki showed me around and had a nice chat. He was super friendly and it's nice to have that friendly, positive experience in a bike shop when you don't know anyone. You can tell they really love 
their bikes and they got some really interesting ones of all different types of styles of riding around. I think my favourite was the Klein with the custom cargo fork. Incredible paint job. And those bars just look really cool on it. Another favourite, of course, is the Rune. I'd ridden one in the New Forest just a few days earlier, so you should check out that video. It looks really cool with these Ultra Dynamico tyres. Just an insane number of really unique bikes and parts. If I lived in South London, I think I'd be going here quite a lot. And they organised some rides too. This happened recently, the Surrey Hills ride about. It looked super fun. So as I said in my last video, bike shop's more than just being a shop. It's about being a community. And it seems like Seabus are doing that pretty well. I wanted to check out Babylondon Cycles as well while I was in the area, but they weren't open this day. A community bike shop, which I'll have to check out next time. Let's head back up to North London. Check out where I used to live and see what my old commute used to be like in London. It was a commute by bike, of course. Just a little connection Now we're up in the borough of Hackney where I used to work. Here I was a primary school teacher or elementary school teacher. I loved working up here. The teachers I worked with were incredible and the students were even more awesome. Students here have the special energy, I think, and really diverse and open-minded students. I was lucky to be happy and often excited to go to work every day. And with a commute like this through Clissold Park, how could you not start off the day well? I liked going through here and experiencing the different seasons. In the winter, in the morning, it was completely pitch black with the frosted grass. And in the summer, the sunrise is super early. And there'd just be one or two people kind of meditating in the field. Nicer commute than a lot of people in London. I know not everyone is able to commute such a short distance by bike. And I guess my commute is a bit more unusual compared to other people in London, where I don't have to travel into the city. Just skirt around the outside, through the alleyways and back streets of Hackney and Islington. Quite enjoyed living in Islington because I got to live next to my favourite football team. Somehow I convinced my wife to live over here. And luckily, she also became an Arsenal fan, even though Son Heung-min plays for the other team. I didn't choose the best years in Arsenal's history to live around here. It was Arsene Wenger's last few and Unai Emery's first. But I was still lucky to go to all the games with just a few minutes from my sofa to the seat in the stadium. And the atmosphere around here on game days was awesome with all the people in their red and white scarves and shirts coming throughout the day to soak up the atmosphere, do some choice chants with some choice language and hopefully see the Arsenal win. Another reason I loved living here is because just next to the stadium is some of the best Chinese food in London. 
let's go and head down there to check it out. They even have some cold noodles, which if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a big fan. It's Xi'an Impression, right next to the stadium. Pretty simple place. I got some Xi'an cold noodles and some ginger chicken. There's so much more in the menu I wanted, but I was by myself today. So I just stopped myself from ordering more, just had those two dishes and they were stunningly glorious. Of course, clean bowl club, as you saw. Just a stone's throw away is the original Highbury Stadium, which I unluckily didn't get to go to see a game at. One of my regrets. It's now turned into flats and apartments. I like how they've preserved some of the original stadium. I just stayed the night around the corner to reminisce and met up with some friends and said hello to a couple of locals. Day two. I've only got two days, so I've got to make the most of my time here. I start off with a flat white at Fink's on Gillespie Road, right next to the Arsenal Stadium. And I'm going to head off for another coffee and some more incredible food. People say British food's terrible, but I'm always happy to come back and enjoy it. This shop, Sergeant & Co, I went past it almost every day. I never saw it open. I think it's only open by reservation, but it's got some really cool vintage Italian and French road bikes mostly, I think. One day, maybe next time I come, I'll actually try and make an appointment to go and check it out. Back through Clissel Park, on my former commute, enjoying the soft grass and the beautiful scenes and the cool dogs. Insane number of amazing dogs in England. And it's nice to see them off a lead. I didn't realise that was unusual. Some people commented in their country, dogs must be on a lead, not in the UK. And that's fine if they're trained enough, which generally they are here. I can still remember all the shortcuts I used to take from when I lived here, through different parks and back streets, past mosques that used to be cinemas, and making sure I can go through as many parks as possible. Broadway Market next to London Fields. I'm stopping off at Clemson and Sons. When I first started getting into specialty coffee, this was the place where I'd pick up my beans. I got an amazing flat white. This area is super fun on market day when there's so many delicious things to eat. And cycling down next to the canal. It's a world away from the bike paths of the Han River in Seoul. This is a shared path with cyclists, dog walkers, runners, and people who live on boats. It's quite cute, but you've got to ride slow. Some people just shred along, not thinking about it being a shared path with others. On uh, rush hour, it's kind of terrifying, especially when you're cycling, cycling under the bridges you're not sure if you're going to crash into someone on the other side. Actually, I usually uh, try and avoid this path, but I thought it'd be fun to go back onto it today. I had a friend who used to live on one of these canal boats, and unless you want to pay loads of money to moor long term, you can only stay for a certain amount of time, so you've always got to keep on the move 
and your home location changes all the time, which could be quite interesting. But I know sometimes you'd have to move further away and have an even bigger commute. But to live central like this, I think would be fun for a little while. I'm on my way down to go for lunch at one of my favorite restaurants in London, maybe one of my favorite restaurants in the world. Apparently it was one of Anthony Bourdain's favorites too. So I'm in good company. It's down in Smithfield and it's St. John, an institution of British nose to tail eating. I go every time I come back to England now. And I think I've been more since I left England than when I lived in London, because living in London rinses you dry. Quick fold of the Brompton. And they were nice enough to let me bring it in and store it next to the counter. I met my incredibly handsome twin brother for lunch. People always ask what it's like having a twin but I've always had one, so I don't know what it's like not having a twin. But the best thing is, when you're growing up, you always have a best friend to hang out with. And the worst part is people treating you as one person rather than two individuals. St. John, I love the space and their attitude and the food. Bone marrow toast with parsley salad. I think it's a signature dish, truly glorious. You spread the bone marrow on the toast, mix with a bit of salt and parsley salad. Stunning. I had lemon sole for Maine. My brother had sweetbreads, which I've had before here, which is probably one of the best meals I've ever had. A side of Welsh rarebit and some clean plates. A nice light dessert of a butterscotch pudding. And my brother had a raspberry trifle, finished with a couple of double espressos. Always an amazing meal. I can't wait to go back next time. My brother had to go back to work, so I was back off again, riding my bike around London by myself. Stopping off at St Paul's to watch a bit of Wimbledon, which I haven't kept up with at all this year. But these screens are all over the place around London. It's quite cool to be able to watch and chill. Even the police took some time to check it out. I do miss living in London sometimes, but I just couldn't afford it. My wife loved living here because as a non-white person, she felt like just another Londoner rather than a foreigner, which she felt like in some other countries that we lived in. Which is why it's so depressing to see the far right, racist, Islamophobic terrorism happening at the moment. Sadly, it's not something that's come out of nowhere. It's come from decades of demonizing refugees, immigrants and Muslims from the newspapers like the Daily Mail and the Sun and even some of the horrible language from MPs and even people who are in the front bench of government. It's horrendous to think that students I used to teach and friends I have and even family members might feel too scared to be out or could even be attacked at the moment by far-right racists. I'm so ashamed that this is happening in my home country.